Mr. Mays? Present. Here. Ms. Poplar? Present. Mr. Nolden? Mr. Freeman? Present. Mr. Davis? Here. Mr. Neely? Present. Ms. Galloway? Present. Ms. Van Buren? Here. Mr. Kincaid? Here. Thank you. Could, could you please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I'm going to have Councilman Freeman lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. Councilwoman Poplar has requested one. Thank you. Mr. Mays has a request for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm asking for a moment of silence for Ms. Mia Avery and her family. She's a constituent and so is her son. Her son was in a tragic car accident over the weekend at Carpenter and Dort Highway. And I'm also asking for your prayers for her daughter and her granddaughter who was also in this car. These are my neighbors that live across the street from me. So I'm asking a moment of silence and your continual prayers for this family. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Mays, do you have one? Yeah, I would ask for um, a moment of silence and prayers for Mr. Elmo White. He stayed on Graceline in the first ward. I first heard about it. Mr. Billings called me. A lot of people seen it on the news. He was out shoveling snow. and. Um, my heart is heavy, and um, I ask for a moment of silence for Mr. Elmo White, West Graceline, First Ward. Thank you. And Councilperson Galloway? And I'm asking for a moment of silence for um, Harry and Patricia Prince. Their daughter, Vicki Prince, was um, killed the other night, and so if we could just keep them in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. OK, we, um, we have a couple of special orders this evening. Before we get into the regular agenda, Madam Clerk, do you want to uh, do the special orders? Yes, uh, the first special order is to allow for a review of the 2012-2013 City of Flint budget, I'm sorry, audit, as presented by City of Flint Finance Director Gerald Ambrose. Mr. Ambrose. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, Council Members, Clerk. Um, for many years, the firm of Plant Moran has conducted the uh, City of Flint's annual audit. They're here tonight to give you a brief review. Uh, for those in the audience or watching, I would say that the, the audit, as well as the presentation that you'll, be, you'll see tonight, will be online in the City of Flint's website. So with that, I would just like to uh, introduce Tad Harburn, who's the partner for Plant Moran, who will introduce the team and give a brief review. Thank you. Um, I have with me Pam Hill, who's the senior manager in charge of the engagement, and also Amanda Cronk the in charge who does all the work <laughs> she did a nice job but we did uh, present the, in details to the council uh, uh, in the previous meeting uh, we're going to just basically cover some brief highlights um, what you'll note and Jerry did indicate that the comprehensive annual financial report or the audit is on the state's website at this point as long as, as well as any other communications that were issued as part of the audit um, and so at this point in time, we did issue uh, an unmodified opinion that basically indicates that the comprehensive annual financial report, as presented, is free from material misstatement in accordance with general accepted accounting principles. We also did issue another letter, uh, a report on the con internal control, and those items can be viewed on the state website as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to have Pam come up and just cover a, a few brief slides uh, and then we'll uh, turn it back over to the regular council meeting okay thanks Tad good evening just wanted to touch briefly on a few highlights from the city's audit for June 
Fiscal year ended June 30th, 2013. We, we do have some slides up here. We did want to touch briefly on the first is related to your property taxes. So as the city is aware and the council is aware, property tax revenues make up about 20% of your total expend or revenues for the city. And because this is such a significant revenue source, we did want to just highlight the timing of property taxes when it is assessed to a resident or a business and when it becomes revenue for the city. As you can see on the slide, for the budget year ended June 30th, 2014, which is the year that you're currently in, that is based on assessments of properties based on 1231-12. Based on that date, the city saw an additional 18.1% decrease in the total taxable value of the city. And as you can see, from budget year 2010 through budget year 2014, the city's taxable value has decreased approximately 50%. So what that means is a decrease of about 50% in revenues for property taxes to the city if you were to keep the millage rates the same. So as you'll see, I think some communities in Genesee County are starting to see a return and their values start to turn and go up. As evidenced by the latest assessment, City of Flint is not seeing those numbers yet. And so it's very important to keep that in mind as you're budgeting in the future and what that means for you in the future. The other important factor to keep in mind is the effect that Proposal A and Headley has on the increases in the future. So when the city of Flint's residents and businesses start to see their taxable values increase, for example, if a resident sees a 15% increase in their fair market value of their home, the city will not see a 15% increase in their revenues. And this is due to the caps that Proposal A and Headley have put on the city's ability to tax. And so when a resident sees a 15% increase in the fair market value of their home, they will only see the lesser of 5% or inflation as far as an increase in their actual tax bill. And so what that means for the city is reduced revenues and even when values do start to turn around, it will be important to remember that you are still going to be capped at the lesser of 5% or inflation, which really will probably be inflation for quite a while because inflation has not been over 5% in a long time. So it's going to take a very, very long time for the city's taxable value and tax base to grow back to where it was back in, in fiscal year 2010's budget. So it's very important as you're doing future year budgets and forecasting to keep Proposal A and the lag between revenues and assessment dates in mind as you're going forward. We did want to highlight briefly to the governmental fund revenues and the governmental ex fund expenditures. We wanted to compare 2000 and fiscal year 2013 to five, six years ago in fiscal year 2007, just so you can see what the city has been doing in the last few years in order to try to maximize revenue sources and to cut expenditures to try to get out of the structural deficit that the city is currently in. And so this graph, I think, does a very good job to highlight the fact that the city has been aggressively trying to go after various revenue sources in order to maintain the same, same level of services that they have been able to provide to residents. The, a few highlights would be your property tax revenues. So you'll see that that's decreased about $6 million over the last six years. You might be saying, well, it, it hasn't decreased by 50% like you just talked about with the taxable value, but that's because you did have a new public safety millage, which is part of your revenues in 2013. Minus that millage, your property tax revenues would be down about 50%. Instead, they're only down about 26%. Again, income taxes are down about $4 million. State revenue sharing is down about $5 million. And really, the, the biggest reason that the city has been able to see this increase in revenues over this time frame <coughs> is due to the fact that the city has aggressively looked for federal grant revenues and way to subsidize the current levels of service that you are receiving. The biggest would be the safer grant that the city receives for fire services and emergency services and then also some um, HUD monies that you receive in various other grants. And just to put it in perspective how much work the city has done in this grant area, in 2007 the city had approximately 15 grants 
and in 2013 the city was receiving over 30 grants. Next is a recap on the governmental fund expenditures, again comparing 2007 to 2013. You'll notice that there's approximately a 13% overall decrease in expenditures over that time frame. I'm not gonna go into the details of all these um, different functions of the city, but the majority of the decreases are concessions by unions, decreases in positions, empty positions that have not been full, filled. Um, also, various, you'll see some expenses increases, increasing. That's mainly due to grant revenue that's been used to offset some of those expenses. And then you have had decreases in benefits and how much the city is paying versus how much the employees are paying. And I, I did want to point out public safety. So public safety has decreased approximately 10% in expenditures over this time frame, even though you've had a 50% decrease in property tax revenues from your general operating mill in that time frame. So I think it's important to, to make note that the city has tried to come up with creative and aggressive ways to try to continue to keep levels of service even though the revenues have been reduced drastically for property tax revenues and state shared revenues. So kind of to sum it all